Hi, Vinyl Community. It is Glenn Calloway from the basement with my good friend, Sam St. John. How you doing, Sam? Glenn, it's always a pleasure. We haven't done a video together for about three weeks or more, probably. We kind of had things going on. Sam was moving, and I had some personal stuff going on. So uh, we were really excited about getting back uh, in the swing of things with our Absolutely. Sam and Glenn show. <laughs> <laughs> so for today, we've been talking about doing this for about three weeks, but things got in the way of us actually doing it. Our, we were going to do a thing on cover songs, so our top 10 cover songs ranked. And then in the meantime, Nick Rideau, who's got a great channel, he started a contest on uh, under the covers. He's uh, celebrating uh, around 700 subs or trying to get to 700 subs. And uh, Nick's got a great channel and he's a cool guy. And uh, so we thought, why not make this a contest entry to support Nick as well as uh, doing our, our Sam and Glenn show. So. Nick, uh, this consider this an entry for both Sam and I in your contest. We'll leave a, a message uh, that, that it's up and running, and I hope it's not too long for you to uh, watch and see what we pick, but uh, what can I say? It's the thought that counts. Yes. Yeah, so uh, before we start, make sure you go to Sam St. John's channel and subscribe to this man. He's got a great channel, really cool guy, and uh, deserves all your support. And uh, if you haven't supported my channel, just push the little support button there and we're good to go. So uh, we'll just do one at a time back and forth. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So without further ado, Sam, I will let you say your number 10 favorite cover song. Well, thank you, Glenn. It's good to be back on your channel. And um, my, these videos make my week. So I'm glad to, to be back at it. Um, cool. And as you. you briefly mentioned, with some personal things going on, um, I don't have, I've got a few albums to show, a few physical copies to show. Everything else is in boxes, so I do apologize, but all the songs that I'm going to be talking about, I do own in some format somewhere, so um, just keep that in mind. So the first few I don't have physical copies for. And by the way, before we start, we decided to make this kind of pop rock and uh, bass. Yeah. Because Sam and I are both fans of roots music and bluegrass and folk and that kind of stuff, and there's tons of great covers by some That's more, more, more obscure video. type artists so we decided to not to go down that route, route so yeah yeah definitely another video for sure yeah because actually um glenn mentioning that i actually forgot about that rule when i made my preliminary list and i found a couple i was like well i think i'm the one who mentioned that rule and i went back and started crossing them out <laughs> 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 but anyway um okay so without further ado number 10 for me is going to be it's a cover of bob dylan's song boots of spanish leather and it's by a guy named wesley schultz from the lumineers he's the lead singer of the okay. Lumineers, and um he put out a really cool album late last year around christmas of last year called vignettes where he sings a bunch of cover songs by different artists he does a tom Waits song he does a springsteen he even does cheryl crow um just a really good mellow acoustic album but um, he actually did this originally with the Lumineers, his band, as a bonus cut on one of their albums. And then he did a more updated version in 2020 as a duet with a woman named Diana DeMuth, who I wasn't familiar with until the, the song came out. And I remember in the liner notes, because he describes every song as to why he picked it. And he said that, you know, out of all the covers that he's heard of Boots of Spanish Leather, he'd never heard it as a duet, which is kind of how Dylan wrote it just kind of as two lovers from across the pond, you know, mm -hmm. longing for each other, essentially. Um, of course, it was originally on Dylan's The Times They Are a Changing album. And um, it's been done a million times. It actually, a lot of bluegrass groups do different versions of it from what I've, what I've found over my studies <laughs> in YouTube of this song. But Wesley Schultz's is just, it's very poignant. And, you know, it, it makes you a little misty eyed. And it, again, if you're one of those people that don't like Dylan's singing voice, check out this version of Boots of Spanish Leather because it's it's pure poetry and it's a story. So that's my number 10. Perfect. That's great. Lumineers, I mean, amazing band. My one of, Both my daughters, they're one of their favorite bands. Uh, I'm going classic rock, blues rock, one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Johnny Winter, still alive and well. He does a couple of covers on this, but 
he does a great cover of the Stones' "Let It Bleed." So uh, that's my number ten, the great Johnny Winter. Very cool. That's a, that's a great song. Both versions. I mean, I've never I've never heard his version, but I know the Stones' version well, and it, it's a killer song. All right, moving on to um, number nine. Now, the reason I picked this song and put it in here because it it it, it does the the cover version itself is a it's a country rock song. However, it was done originally by uh, Nick Lowe in 1980 in 1985, I believe, on his Rose of England album, and the song is called "She Don't Love Nobody," and the version I'm picking is by the Desert Rose Band from 1989, which, of course, has Chris Hillman from The Birds as yeah. the lead leader of that group, as well as Herb Peterson and John Jorgensen um, to make off the trio. But I never heard this song until this year. And I do have the Nick Lowe copy. And if you don't know Nick Lowe, check him out. Great power pop songwriter, yeah. some country rock. But as a British singer, it's, kind of, it's really cool. Um, just a killer call and response song, you know, like the, the, the singer will sing, you know, from my humble point of view. And then the background vocalist, she don't love nobody, nothing borrowed, nothing blue. She don't love nobody. Um, and it's a song. It was written by John Hyatt. Again, I know it's he's a big um, Glenn's a big fan of John Hyatt. Yes. And he never officially recorded it. He did a demo version, which is really good. It's on YouTube. But. Nick Lowe was the first to properly record it, and the Desert Rose Band really kicked off. And it's, it's just a killer song. It's got killer steel guitar and electric guitar, um, kind of back and forth solos. So that's my um, number nine pick by the Desert Rose Band. Awesome. Yeah, Nick Lowe's great. There's a lot of good covers of Nick Lowe's uh, albums. Oh, yeah. My number nine, this is to suck up to use. Uh, this is my present to you. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, something in the air. Oh, cool. Yeah. They did that kind of as a bonus track, I think, on the Greatest Hits album. Correct. And uh, I, I, I love that song, the original version of it, the hit, and uh, they do a, just an amazing cover of it. So something in the air, Tom Petty is my number nine. Originally by Thunderclap Newman. Thunderclap Newman. Yes. But that their version was produced by uh, Pete Townsend. I that's believe. right. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That, that's a cool because like, I, I first heard that Greatest Hits album. That was like my first intro to Tom Petty, my first physical Tom Petty album. And, you know, I was like something in the air. I mean, that's a that's killer. But it's not really like in the canon of Tom Petty songs. It's not really a greatest hit. It's like yeah. you never hear it. Like that's become a deep cut. And mm -hmm. I'm like, why don't they ever play that song? It was on the greatest hits to which as i got older i learned they recorded it for the greatest hits which i know tom petty hated but anyway all right um number eight so this this might be the biggest curveball i went with a christmas song but it's the bruce springsteen his version of merry christmas baby wow. which oh, that's is, cool. I like so that. the, other, the other day um i was at my band practice on thursday and my uncle and I, we were the only two there. My uncle plays drums for the band and we were just kind of chewing the fat. And um, we were talking about that version of Merry Christmas Baby because we were talking about trying to do a Christmas program this December and we were just throwing out things and we always joke around with that song. But I played it on my phone through the microphone and I was like, I, I always forget until every Christmas goes around how rock and Springsteen's version is of that song. Mm -hmm. um, it was written in 1947 by um well it was written in 1947 and recorded by a guy named charles brown and then chuck berry did it in the 50s um there are hundreds of versions of the song springsteen's was in 1980 uh, i think it was a b-side yeah. for an album it was and it's it's a live it's a live track but just clarence's saxophone on it is just killer and springsteen just commanding the band you know when he sends like he goes, Santa came down the chimney. Wow. Yeah. I have yeah. Matt Weinberg on the drums. It's just, it's a rocking song. Christmas or not, it's a killer song. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've got to put that on my list because I always forget about it. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about Christmas in October. So that's my number eight. 
we haven't even got to Thanksgiving yet, and Sam's got in the Christmas spirit. That's pretty good. I'm always in that spirit. Yeah. That's awesome. My wife will love that. Okay, my number eight. I just picked up this CD yesterday for dollar ninety nine at one of those places where you drop off all your clothes and whatever. Yeah. Some CDs there. Linda Ronstadt's Greatest Hits Volume Two. She does so many great covers in the seventies. So I picked Poor Pitiful Me, the uh, Warren Zevon song. I just love that. I've been listening to this album, just going, man, oh, man. There's so many great covers on this. She does Tumbling Dice on here too, and uh, Just One Look. Back in the USA, Blue Bayou, It's So Easy, tons of them. But I picked Poor Pitiful Me because I'm a big Warren Zevon fan. So that's my number eight. Did you ever see her live? No. I wish I had him. Mm. All right. My number seven is a song to talk about Tom Petty for a minute. Um, it's a song that is this version and Tom Petty's are just incredibly overplayed. And I almost debated not even putting this in there, but I remember the first time, well, the first few times that I heard this and thinking like, that's a killer cover because he made it his own. And that is John Mayer's version of um, Free Fallen that he does on this oh, live album. This double I've never live heard album. That. Um, this is a killer album. It's called Live in Los Angeles, um, Where the Light Is, is the name of the album. And he set it up where the first third of the album is acoustic, which is when he does Free Fallen. The second is the John Mayer Blues Trio, which he does with Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino. And then um, the third is his full band. That's where he kind of does more of the hits. Yeah. But it's just, it's so emotional how he does it. It almost rivals Petty's if, because it's just so different and just the emotion. And he just builds up his voice to the end and just belts it. And just his guitar playing on acoustic guitar is just second to none. Um, and I mean, I, it, there's, a, there's a great live DVD that shows him playing it too. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite covers ever. So oh, that's, that's my- great. I didn't know that existed. I, I'll have to see if I can find that on YouTube and listen to it. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm gonna go with, you know, all year long, I've been talking about what my album of the year is, right? Dolan's does Nesmith. Mm -hmm. I found an album that it's tied with now. Covers album. And I'm taking my next pick off of this oh, album. Have you heard this yet? Chris I Lane? haven't heard it yet. I've seen several people Sam, talk about it. This will blow you away. Like, get on Amazon like, right now. We'll put the video on pause and go order it. Because I'm telling <laughs> you, you will freaking love this. I guarantee it. It's just acoustic guitar and piano. And Chrissy's great voice. And it's all deep cuts. There's no, like, you know times they are changing and blowing the wind and yeah so i i'm picking the cover tune standing in the doorway it's just absolutely incredible that's going to be I, I could have picked this whole cd as just my top 10 i i just can't get it out of the cd player it's an amazing album chrissy hine standing in the doorway wow. number seven right correct now, actually, I think as we're speaking, I am going to make a quick change to my list as we speak. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Because not only am I making a quick change, I'm removing this song, the song that I originally had from the list, because I completely forgot about one of my favorite cover songs, and I've got to put it on here. So my number six originally, so I'm just going to go ahead and mention it. My number six originally was Tom Petty's version of I'll Feel a Whole Lot Better by The Birds. Okay. Uh, that now has become an honorable mention. But I'm jumping ahead now to saying that the version of Atlantic City by the band is my number six. Which, Great, um, which I know all I about that. Um, I mentioned in our video with Rich Strickler, if y'all don't did. know him, go check out Rich. Um, a few videos talked about the band and um, Springsteen did it on his album, Nebraska, which is like his acoustic demo, essentially a demo sounding album that he did in his bedroom um, and like bathroom. He just, it was all done like on a tape recorder, but the band just kills a version of it with Levon Adelin, other late uh, 80s albums after Robbie Robertson, you know, after their reunion and Robbie Robertson didn't come back. But that song, I mean, I hear it. And that's one of those, like, I can't turn it. If I hear that version by the band, if it's on like a 
an online playlist that like a mix that some Spotify is making for me. Um, so yeah, Atlantic City is my number six. So I'm sorry, Tom Petty, but I had to kick you for that song. Wow, that's that's a great pick. That, that one totally was off my radar, but awesome. Yeah. Okay, my number six. There's two amazing covers. Well, there's a few, but there's two amazing covers on this Joe Cocker album. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm not picking with a little help from my friends, which I think a lot of people think is, you know, one of the greatest covers of all time. I'm picking Feeling All Right, the traffic song mm -hmm. that kicks off the album. Good pick. I just freaking love the way Joe Cocker does that song. High energy, love the way it starts. And uh, this, oh man, he just does an amazing job. It's a great song. So Joe Cocker, Feeling All Right. There's so many cover, great cover songs in this you could pick. Like he does Just Like a Woman on this and Feeling All Right, Bye Bye Blackbird, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, I Shall Be Released. And you could pick a ton of them. His I Shall Be Released is fantastic. And so yeah. is Bye Bye Blackbird. I like that version too. Yeah. It's funny that you pull up that CD. When I was getting the few CDs that I could grab here, that CD was like on the top of one of my stacks of CDs that I had a rummage through with Joe Cocker when I opened up the box. That's funny. <laughs> All right, top five. Here we go. Yeah. So I get this out. This this cover version doesn't have a physical um, copy, but I'm gonna show. This is the band, the Avett Brothers. Great album. That's my favorite Avett Brothers album, by the way. It's a lot. This is when they became like stadium guys, like this album with Rick Rubin. But the song is um, from a 2020 special that they did in October for the West Wing. Um, it was called the a West Wing special for the show. They talked, they had all sorts of political um, advocates on there, but they closed the show with a cover of Early in the Morning by Peter, Paul, and Mary. And it's it's the two of them and a, a lady, I can't remember the woman's name who's between them. I've, I've searched high and low to try to find her name and I can't find her name anywhere. But it's Scott and Seth Abed with this woman. They're on two acoustic guitars and they have a, a bass player off to the side. Um, not not their regular bass player, but you're, it's only like a minute and 45 seconds, just like the Peter, Paul and Mary song. But their vocal har harmony blend is just fantastic. I mean, it. I remember I heard it and I listened to it probably 10 times that day. But when, when I first saw it on YouTube, I was like, man, that's good. And it's only a minute and a half. Oh. So I'm like, this is not long enough. But they could do a, like they could go out and do a Peter, Paul and Mary tribute show with this girl. <laughs> that's it's fantastic. Cool. So um yeah, if you if y'all don't know it, go check out "Early in the Morning" by um, the Avid Brothers on YouTube. It's it's wow. really good. Very cool. That's cool, Vic. Okay, I'm going uh, Dylan cover. How could Mister Tambourine Man not be on a favorite covers list? One of the great covers of all time. Really put Dylan on the map to the pop audience. Yeah was well, arguably the father of uh, folk rock the way they did that song and uh, yeah mr tambourine great dylan song and an amazing cover yeah i mean yeah it, it that's one of those songs too i think that where dylan when he goes back to play it he kind of uses their version as a template which you know um which is cool how they had that even his own song had an influence on him yeah exactly yeah so cool pick well uh to stay in line there um uh, number four i'm also going to go with the birds um and again i don't have this i have the cd but i can't find it right now but it's their version of you ain't going nowhere from oh, sweet fantastic Blade. damn um, okay i'm gonna cross some stuff out here yeah no that's <laughs> great pick i but, love that song I mean, sweetheart of the rodeo that was one of those albums where it was the cross blending of genres um a rock band doing country music and of course from it was it was only a two-year-old song at the time dylan wrote it as part of the basement tapes with the band and up in mm -hmm. woodstock and i think he his version came out on the his third greatest hits and then there was some of course it's on bootleg series and varying forms but the birds made it a true sing-along country song mm -hmm. and um again if y'all don't know sweetheart of the rodeo again pause this and just order it go order it. it's the birds with graham parsons and they just do a bunch of killer country songs or like 
covers with some Graham Parsons originals. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's one of those songs where I just, I never get tired of it. I love to play it. Oh, I know Glenn likes to play it on banjo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's my number four. You got to throw in the birds for covers. Yeah, that's good. We got two birds in a row there. You could do a whole 10 just on birds covers. Yeah, you could. Okay. I'm getting current here. I'm going to be hip. Okay. For an old guy. All right. Jack White and the White Stripes. Jolene. Oh, okay. Dolly Parton's great song. They do an amazing version of Jolene. Have you heard it? I don't think I, I know that they've done it, but I don't oh, that's think amazing. I'm... It's on this greatest hits album, and I think it's on one of their studio albums too. So, uh, but yeah, hmm. they do have just an incredible cover of that song. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's neat. That's my number four. I absolutely love it. All right, the big the big three here. Uh, so, I'm gonna be sticking. So all of the essentially from. My four, three, two, one all have common threads with one another. So here we go. Number three, from All Things Must Pass, if not for you, George Harrison does Dylan. Um, a lot of that album is, is George kind of getting that Dylan influence. I know that the Beatles did it early with Norwegian Wood and Rubber Soul and um, a few other songs. You've got a Hydra Love Away even on Help. But this is George just completely covering Dylan unabashedly. And well, don't forget, George had spent the previous year, or some of the previous year in Woodstock. Yeah. With Dylan yeah, and the band, right? And they everybody, wrote If Not For You there. And uh, yeah, I mean, he really was. Yeah, him and uh, Clapton, yeah. Delaney and Bonnie, they're all hanging yeah. out up there. They're getting influenced by Dylan and the band, which yeah. is awesome that those English guys were like, man, this. It's American Canadian music is pretty good. Like, yeah, that's what they're talking about here. Yeah, but I mean, George's. I mean, it's one of those songs where it's it's right here. You know, one day Dylan's is here, next day George's is here. But Dylan's came out in uh, October, I think, on the New Morning album from 1970, and All Things Must Pass came out in '70 um, as well, the next month in November. So. You know, they were hanging out together. Of course, they became fellow Wilburys in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But um, just the slide guitar that George plays is beautiful. And just the, the number of musicians that are playing on that with Ringo and Badfinger and um, you know, Jim Keltner, all those guys back and forth on those sessions. Bobby Whitlock, just it's it's such a perfect tune. And yeah. George does it beautifully. The harmonica is beautiful. It's, it's, it's just a great cover. Yeah, I agree. Great pick. My number four is a Beatles cover. Yes. Does every little thing. Oh, okay. Fantastic version of it. John Anderson's vocals fantastic. And in the middle of it, they kind of prog it up a little bit, but just an awesome cover of every little thing off of what album would that be on? It was on Beatles six Beatles in North sale. America. Probably Beatles for, Beatles sale. for sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you haven't heard Yes do that, check it out. Really good. I did not know that they did that. Yeah, great, great version. All Let's right. Now we're down to our last two. Yeah, we're moving. Number two, uh, The Birds, back to The Birds. The Birds, 1967, My Back Pages. Oh. Which to me, it's a perfect, I, I know critics said that it's probably one of their greatest, if not the greatest Dylan cover that they did just based on arrangement and making it completely their own. Um, Dylan did it three years prior on the Another Side of Dylan, a Bob Dylan album, which his version has several more verses and a few extra minutes. And the birds cut it down to a number of three minute yeah, pop rock. They made it a single, yeah. Um, and I know, I think, if I remember right, that this like this was about the time where Crosby and the Birds, he was like, you know, are, are we really doing another Dylan cover? Because this was from the Younger Than Yesterday album, which pulled from that song, you know, the lines, I was so much older than I'm younger than that now. Yeah. But so I would have I would have gone with the uh, um, performance at the 
Dylan um, 25th. The, the 30th anniversary, anniversary show? The Bob 30th, Fest? 30th, 30th yeah. in, but I didn't because Dylan is on that track. So I was like, it's not yeah. really, he's covering. Well, there is, it's, that version is Dylan covering the birds, covering Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, they do, and they do all the verses on that, which I love too, because yeah. this is one of the songs, again, it could be 10 minutes and I would love, yeah. you know, a few extra verses, but it's it's just, it, I, I turn up the speaker every time when this song comes yeah, it's on. Great. Great it's great. It's like a faded in intro too, which is cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It's three minutes that's and nine up. seconds, by the way, if you're interested. I just oh, okay. There you Take notes. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Wow. Can't argue with that. Who would have thought in a million years when we were doing this video that we'd have two Nick Lowe covers? Oh, okay. Elvis Costello. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, it's such a rocker. This is my favorite Elvis Costello album, Mark Forces. The first three are just incredible. So, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I love this album, and this is the closing track. I, I actually thought it was an Elvis Costello song. It was a while before I knew that Nick Lowe was A lot of people did. Yeah. So, but he kind of owns it as far as I'm concerned. Mm. But much more angry, kind of, a, yeah, I don't know, protesty kind of version it's than like, Nick Lowe's. Like it's a more up to date, give peace a chance. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. A little yeah. bit, a little bit angrier, like you said, more punk. Yeah. So that's cool. That's now we're down to our number ones. Killer. Yeah. And, um, I, yeah, again, my number one, I, there was no question. I mean, I, I, I wrote all my songs down um, as I did the way I prepare for these lists is, you know, and I'm, I think Glenn does too. You just kind of spew everything out on a piece of paper and then kind of order it from there. But this one, I was like, I know that this one doesn't like I filled in number one quick and then went kind of backwards, filled in the middle. Um, and it may be yours, too. I don't know. But like I said, these last four songs are all intertwined because all the artists are together yeah. and is from 2002 from one of the greatest tribute shows ever the concert for george isn't it a pity by um of course george harrison from the all things must pass album but yeah. this version is essentially a dual vocal eric clapton with billy preston billy preston's the one who really takes it away up to another dimension yeah. and it, it it always it's an emotional song because of course the concert for George came out a year after he passed and his son, Donnie Harrison's on stage who looks just like George from like the um, help era. Yeah. And, you know, you have Jeff Lynn up on the stage, you have Preston, you have Eric Clapton, um, you know, you have just this a massive amount of talent on stage for this particular song. Um, Billy Preston hits this organ solo and he's just, you know, he's taking everybody to church on the organ and Eric Clapton plays this crying guitar solo and Danny is just strumming his 12 string <laughs> um, guitar just like his face you can see he's holding back emotion but it's just a it's just a perfect live performance perfect cover um it it beats George's you know I think it beats George's wow so, that's awesome yeah it's, it's a pretty emotional cover for sure that's my number one wow that's very cool that came out of left field I wasn't expecting that I thought you were the way you were talking. You were going to say mine. You and me have the same one, but mine goes back to 1968 or 69. It's the greatest cover of all time. I did. This has to be number one. There's never been a better cover. Took a great song off one of my favorite Dylan albums and made it his own. It's all all on the Watchtower. Oh, okay. Have, I mean, it, it's genius. I mean, if you listen to all along, you listen to John Wesley Harding and hear all on the watchtower and then can you imagine jimmy hendrix hearing that and then going hey, i think i'll do this with it like i just it just and make it out my mind mark. how he could have done that yeah just genius yeah and even dylan does the song more like jimmy does it now i mean he, he yeah. even admits jimmy owns the song because dylan's on the john wesley Hardy almost sounds like a demo it's kind of like he's just kind of figuring out what the harmonica is going to sound like like it's yeah. not his best for playing it's just yeah it's it's kind of tinny yeah but and then hendrix said yeah i'll do it but i'm gonna do it this way <laughs> yeah it's just crazy i can't believe that someone had just had the imagination to do that yeah Dylan, imagine dylan hearing that for the first time must have blew his oh, I know. mind 
I know. Oh, yeah. see, John was recording. That was 67. So Dylan yeah. would have been 26. Well, next year, the year after that, Hendrix, yeah, they came out in 69, uh, Metric Ladyland. So. so Dylan was about my age. He had 26, 27 when it came out. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. So, well, that was fun. It was. I, there were some surprises, I think, on both sides. I think so. Christmas and country rock and yeah, uh, yeah, and the white Good stripes stuff. doing Jolene. Ooh, white stripes doing Jolene, yeah. Some <laughs> rock doing the Queen of Country. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. Well, thanks everybody for watching, uh, Nick. If you had to sit through this to see what our covers were for your contest, we apologize. <laughs> Hope you could you could fast forward through it. Just scroll, you know. Yeah. Whatever you to do, buddy. But uh, um, yeah, so everybody, please go to Nick Rideau's channel and check him out. And everybody go to Sam St. John's channel and check him out. And everybody hang out at my channel and check me out. Yeah. And uh, we will see you guys soon. I hope Thank so. You. Thanks, Sam. Take care, y'all.